Okay, welcome everybody. I make it 7.30 here in the evening in the United Arab Emirates, so we'll, uh, we shall begin our webinar on the University of Northampton Doctorate of Business Administration. My name is Professor Tim Campbell. I'm a, a visiting professor of international management at the university, and I look after the DBA program locally, or here the, the program that the university runs in, uh, in partnership with Stafford Global. So what I want to do today, or tonight rather, is just I'm going to spend 15 minutes going through a short presentation just about some key things about the University of Northampton DBA program, and then I'll take any questions at the end. So just before we get on to the DBA program, just a quick note about the University of Northampton itself. The first question, of course, is, well, where is it? Well, it's about an about a, oh, it's about a uh, hundred kilometres north of London, Northampton is. It's an old historic town, and I'm pointing to it there with a the big arrow there of the UK, about an hour by train of the north, uh, of the north there. And in the, the town of Northampton, you will find, oh, you used to find just on the outskirts of it, the University of Northampton campus. But the university opened a brand new campus back in uh, 2018, a few years ago now. And it's now actually right in the centre of the town and a lovely sort of green field site. And in fact, you can see me, you see a little bit more of it there. And on that campus, in fact, this is a, a picture of one of the buildings, the Senate building. And on one of the floors of the Senate building is the research students space. So that's a, a space where yourselves, as, uh, if you join the DBA programme, or when you join, I hope, we'll be able to, anytime you go to campus, there's always a space there for you to actually work on the campus itself, and that's Senate building. And just a last word about the university, because you'll have a good look at its own website, I'm sure, and do your research, but just by way of introduction, education in Northampton dates back to the 13th century, and the modern University of Northampton's origins date back about a, uh, about 100 years and it currently has in the region of 14,000 students and 1,500 staff so it's a sizable it's a sizable university but as I say I'm sure you'll have a look at its website and find out more about it yourselves because what I really want to talk about tonight is this DBA program the Doctor of Business Administration and the first question I think we need to begin with and the question I get probably most often is well what actually is a doctorate well, doctorate is considered a terminal degree, meaning it's the highest level of degree you can be awarded. There are some exceptions to that, but generally speaking, it goes a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and then a doctorate degree. And there are two types of doctorates, and they have different audiences and different outcomes. The first are professional doctorates, and these are doctorates that people will do who are primarily engaged in a profession rather than fully engaged with research. So, for example, if you go uh, to your to a, a to a medical doctor, the doctor is obviously engaged within the medical profession, and that person will have a professional degree, an MD. Or there are professional doctorates for people who are in engineering. There are professional doctorates for people in uh, pharmaceuticals um, and pharmacy, rather, uh, in education. For people who want to work in education and want to move up to the highest levels of education, they can do a doctorate of education. And of course, the professional doctorate for business and management people is the DBA, the Doctorate of Business Administration. So as I say, professional doctorates primarily for people who are engaged within a profession. Those that are primarily engaged in research, they do research doctorates, the most well-known of which is the PhD. So as I say, they just have, they're actually very similar. They're academically equivalent. They're both research-based degrees. They both confer upon the title doctor. But they have different audiences and the fact of one's more so wants to be engaged and remain engaged within a profession and the other more so will you'll find in academic circles and universities or research institutes. And they have different outcomes. Professional doctorates will be more practical and applied. Research doctorates can be simply theory building. And on this next slide, I've just actually, it's a bit wordy, but I'll read through it because I think it makes a good point. It's just a, uh, it's just a pro, it just shows what the difference, uh, it's from a website called allbusinessschools.com and it just makes this distinction quite nicely. So I'll read through it. It says that PhD programs and business focus intensively on preparing candidates to conduct highly specialized scholarly research. 
They focus on the development of new theory in management, economics, and related fields. Most PhD in business administration graduates lead to careers as university researchers and professors or as senior researchers in business and government. Whereas the DBA, the Doctorate of Business Administration programs, focus on the application of theory rather than on the development of new theory. The Doctor of Business Administration, by virtue of its focus on the application of theory, has more practical application and managerial settings than the PhD. So as I think, so as I say, I think that makes the distinction quite nicely, but this isn't a hard and fast rule. I've known plenty of people who work in universities who have DBA degrees, and I've known plenty of people in industry who have PhDs. So this is just a general rule of thumb. There are, of course, exceptions. And you yourselves might be thinking of doing a DBA, remaining within the professional environment, the business and management environment, but doing a bit of teaching in some stage as well. And that's perfectly fine with a, with a DBA degree. So what sort of things do you study? DBA topics. This is just a selection of some of our current and past students and the sorts of things that they were doing. And basically you can do anything at all business and management. So here's, an, here's, as you can see, there's all sorts of different fields here. We've got a critical examination of a performance management system, leadership styles and employee performance, an assessment of corporate governance in the public sector, assessing the value chain in a manufacturing business, reasons for investing in high-tech startups, resolving project conflicts, perception of luxury goods in the UAE, and knowledge transfer and management training. So you see these are sort of OB, HRM, strategy, innovation, finance, operations, logistics, any of these types of things will all make a perfectly good DBA topic. How we taught them. So this is what we call a two plus two program. So you do two years in the taught modules where you'll study six modules. And these two years will set you up, let you know everything you need to know about completing the second two years, which is the thesis stage or the professional research stage. So in these taught modules for the first two, year, uh, first two years, there are six of them. So they're spaced about two or three months apart. And by the way, I'm pleased to say, as you see from my slide here, we're back to face-to-face -face workshops for our next intake, which starts in November which is intake 14, by the way, and we have two intakes a year. So this is a, that'll be seven years we've been running the, the, this Middle East and Africa program. I say Middle East and Africa because predominantly that's where the students come from for this intake, for this intake but you can come from further abroad and do come from further abroad. Um, anyway, as I say, we're back to face-to-face, -to -face, which is good because, of course, because of COVID, we'd had to replace the face-to-face -face for a while, uh, well, quite a while, for over two years with virtual workshops. So we're back to face to face with the Northampton professors fly in to teach these workshops. The first and the last one are four day workshops. They run from a Thursday to a Sunday and then the four in the middle are three days where they run from a Friday to a Sunday. So the professor from Northampton flies here to the United Arab Emirates, takes the workshop, gets to know all the students. And then after that, you'll communicate using the Nile site, which is a virtual learning environment I'll talk about in a moment. And support you through the assessments and then you move on to your next module okay so it's a two plus two model two years prepares you for everything you need to know to move on to the second two years which is a professional research where you do a, a thesis and you're supported by three people a director of studies a first supervisor and a second supervisor okay so that's the program just the sort of assessment types that happen in those first two years, it depends on the module, but there's all sorts of different assessment types. It could be an essay, a seminar presentation, uh, portfolio of work, research report, reflective report, research proposal, all different types of things will be depending on what the module is. And of course, your tutor will take you through exactly what the assessment is. None of them ex are exams. Because in, uh, when you get to doctoral level, really you need time to be able to think about construct assignments, which exams are more, more an exercise within memory. So they're all some form of an assignment. And you also do a practice viva voce at one stage, which is how your thesis is um, assessed. That, that, that thesis you do in the final two years. Once you submit that thesis, you're assessed by a viva voce examination, which isn't, means an oral examination. 
which you which is held at the University of Northampton. You submit your thesis and then you go through the Viva Voce. Once you finish that, it's all done. So that's assessment. There's plenty of support on the program. There's the International DBA Program Leader who sits in Northampton. Uh, you will meet this person in the application process. If you get uh, asked to do an interview, you will meet the International DBA Program Leader who looks after everything. Then every module in that facilitated stage has an expert professor, tutor. When you get to the thesis, as I mentioned, you have a director of study, two supervisors. There's all the administration and the graduate school at Northampton, plus local administration. If you need the people at Stafford to help out, they can point you in the right direction. The VLE I talked about is called Nile Northampton Integrated Learning Environment. Every module has its own Nile site where the tutor will post videos, resources, um, lecture slides, whatever they think is relevant to their particular module will all be contained within this within a Nile site. It's also where you submit your assignments and do everything else. And there's also a very extensive online library which has all the resources that you need to complete your studies. And I also just want to add something here as well. There's not just all these resources you get with the DBA program. As a doctoral level researcher at the University of Northampton, you also have access to the graduate school. And the graduate school looks after all the doctoral students across the university, so all the PhD students and everybody else as well. And here it describes itself as a university-wide framework for training, support, career preparation and administration to help you throughout your postgraduate research degree and early research career to achieve your potential. So that's a really useful resource, the graduate school. Now, just, just something that you, you, you may find useful. Every year it comes out with an extensive program of training courses online and face-to-face, -face, although you guys being at a distance will probably go with the online ones, but you're more than welcome to go to the ones on campus. Um, and these are extra supports for things like writing a literature review, research ethics, SPSS is a quantitative analysis software that we use, in vivo is a qualitative analysis software we use, and many, many more. So you don't so you don't need to engage with these extra resources you have with the graduate school, you have everything within the DBA program. But if you need extra support, the graduate school has lots of it there for you, which is also completely a part of yours, of, of, completely all accessible to you as a doctoral level student. Let's look at these entry requirements then, some of these sort of more, uh, these sort of uh, basic issues of the DBA program. And this is the usual entry requirements, hold a master's degree in a business related subject ideally completed within the last 10 years. If it's longer than that, as long as you've shown some sort of training and some sort of work-related courses, or you're showing that you're keeping your skills up to date in some way, then that will be generally be okay. We'd expect you to have a minimum of five years work experience, at least some of which should be at a senior level, and to be employed in a leadership management role capable of supporting the achievement of the program learning outcomes. So everybody on the uh, DBA program, of course, is, is working and generally in senior positions, some in more sort of middle level positions, but, some, but a lot in senior positions. Some self-employed as well, own businesses, consultancy, that type of thing as well. But these are the sorts of requirements we look for. To actually apply a CV, a personal statement, two references, degree certificates and transcripts are all fairly straightforward for any type of ap academic application. Um, you will only need evidence of English language ability if you're asked for it. If your master's, for example, was done in English, you're not going to be asked for, um, for that. So once you submit all these things, you also submit a research proposal. And I'm going to talk more about that in the next couple of slides. So you'll also submit a research proposal, which is about a thousand words, just which gives the applications team, uh, rather the admissions team, an idea about what sort of thing you're thinking about researching. And then once you're, if that all goes well, then you'll be invited for an interview where you will meet with the DBA program leader and also somebody else who knows about your subject area. So there'll be two of you. And during that interview, they'll ask you about all your application documents, but they'll particularly ask you about that research proposal and what you're thinking about doing. So as I say, just a bit more on the proposal. 
So, you know, first question, why do we want a short proposal before you even start a doctoral level program? And these are the main reasons. Firstly, the admissions team looking, is the applicant capable of studying at doctoral level? Now, we don't kid anybody. Doctoral level is, it's, it, as I said at the start, it's the, you know, the highest award that can be attained. It is a big step up from master's level. It's a long journey of four years. And we want to make sure, you know, right from the start that this person has the best opportunity to succeed on the program. So the proposal gives the admissions team an idea that is the applicant actually capable of succeeding at doctoral level. The second thing they're looking for is does the proposed research fit with the nature of a DBA? And as I said before, it needs to be something, have some sort of practical outcome to it. So it can be in any area you like. And most students will do something in the area that they're currently employed in or that their career is in. So the HRM person will normally do say, something HRM, finance person, something finance, etc. And that's the way it normally goes. Um, but this research needs to, as I say, make sure it has something practical as an outcome. And the third thing usually isn't a problem, but the university needs to make sure it has an appropriate supervisor. And all major areas of management can be supervised but if you came up with a very, very specific proposal and a very niche topic, it could just be possible that there's not somebody with enough experience in that topic to be able to supervise. So you don't want to be going too niche and narrow to begin with. Broad it out more generally into the main business and management topics. And just a last word on this proposal. What did these, the Northampton team look for in a proposal? They're saying, can it make a practical contribution to business and management? Can the applicant reference you using the Harvard system, which is a system the university uses and most other UK universities do as well? Can they write a brief literature review and cite at least a few authors in the field? Do they have a basic understanding of research methods? And I'll just put in the bold in the bottom here that all business and management master's graduates should already have these skills. So they shouldn't be anything particularly new to you. Okay, just the last few things. Fees, again, this is, uh, have a look on the Stafford Global website for the current fees because they can change between intakes because I want, so I want to make sure you have the, the, the most up-to-date ones. But as you will see from the fees, they are very reasonable for this type of a program. Remember, it's not an online program. It's a part-time taught program by fly-in faculty from the university. Just a last couple of things. Why you should do a DBA at Northampton? Because it's an investment in your future, both in the academic and professional fields. It's the highest qualification in business and management. You'll contribute to business and management practice. It would be expected that your thesis would be published. There's international and local supervision and support, workshops from leading international faculty. If I sort of put this together in a nutshell, just as a quote from me, completion of the Northampton DBA will set you apart as an expert, able to lead and manage at the highest levels. You will have made a unique contribution to your field and developed outstanding analytical critical, creative, and reflective skills so needed in today's business world. So as I'm alluding to here, a DBA really does set you apart as an expert and leads into some of the, uh, some of the highest levels in business or consultancy or management training or a bit of teaching or whatever it is that you want to do. This is the way, this is, uh, as I say, an investment in how to get there. Okay, I did pretty well with that. Uh, oh, 20 minutes, oh, a little bit longer, but that's fine. Because what's most important is to actually answer any questions that you have about the program. And the easiest way to do that is using that question box there. Then I can see your questions and answer them. So I'm having a look now. Okay, so I've got some question here. The first question I've got is, First question I've got is, can this program be completed in two to three years? Uh, no, it can't be completed. You will need the full four years to do the program. The first two years are already set, have a set timetable, so you can't do it any faster than that. You could technically do the second two years or do your research project faster than two years and get it submitted beforehand. Um, but very few students, it, it just wouldn't make sense to do that. You need that time. 
I'm just trying to think who the fastest student did. I think three years and 10 months was our student who's done it fastest from beginning to thesis submission. So you can do it a little bit sooner, but you're far better off just thinking it's a four year program because you'll need that time. There's, there's no point rushing things. You want to succeed, that's the main thing. Um, so the next question is, what is the nature of the assessment? So as I mentioned during the presentation, it's a whole variety of different assessments, different word counts, depends on the modules. Could be a report, it could be an essay, can be a practice viva voce, can be um, um, a, re a reflective report, various different things. Uh, next question, I completed my master's degree in engineering. Will I be accepted? We're generally looking for people who've done a master's degree in business and management. But however, if you have a lot of experience in business and management, it would be well worth applying and that could make up for your degree being in engineering. So I couldn't guarantee it, but the, the admissions team would look at it. Um, next question, I've been advised that the workshops are currently virtual. As I mentioned, remember, we're now back face to face in Northampton. And the next part of that question, what happens if you miss a workshop? You must, these workshops are mandatory. You must make these workshops here in the UAE because they're so important and integral to the course. If you didn't go to a workshop, well, you'll find it very difficult to pass the module. So you must get to them. However, if you got, if something happened, for example, when you're on to workshop three or whatever it might be and health reasons or something happened, you couldn't make the workshop, then the DBA teaching team would do their best to catch you up but you couldn't do that for every module. You know, if it's just happened because of reasons outside of your control, that would be right. You need to aim to be at all of the workshops. Uh, what's my next question? Okay, so the next question is after the taught modules are complete, can I do the rest of the program on campus? Well, no, because the second part of the program, the last two years are a supervision stage. So there aren't any workshop, there aren't any taught parts on campus anyway. So you, even the on-campus DBO students, you'd be doing things virtually because you're being supervised by your supervisors. However, if you wanted to go to campus and you wanted to go to some, uh, some of the workshops that the graduate school has, or you want to use that research student space and the, that I showed you at the start, any of that's fine, but there would be no need to go to campus. Uh, do we accept exemptions for this program? Not for this, not for this program, because you really need to start and finish all of the taught modules because they build on each other. So you may have started a, D, a doctoral program at, a, at another university, for example, and it just won't map quite, they don't map easily onto each other. So you would need to start from the start for the DBA. As I say, otherwise you would just miss things. Um, will my degree state online distance learning? No, it won't because it's a part-time course. It's not considered online or distance learning because you are being taught face-to-face -face by the faculty. Um, oh, yeah, here's a good question. Is there a possibility to change the topic of the accepted proposal within the first two years? I would, what, so when you actually, as I was mentioning, when you apply for the program, you do a 1,000 word proposal, a short proposal, an indication of what you want to do. Actually, at the end of the two years, what your assignment for your final module is to do another proposal of two and a half thousand words. And that will be far more detailed. And I guarantee the proposal you do then will likely to be quite different than the one you started with. Now, the vast majority of people still do the, are in the same sort of field or they still have the same idea, but it will change a lot over these two years. And when you do that final proposal, that's the one that you will go into your thesis stage with. So short answer to that is, uh, yes, it can change. Your initial idea can change. Um, is it true that the university is one of the top 100 universities in the UK? It probably is. <laughs> I haven't actually checked. You probably know that better than I do uh, when you do your own research and have a look at the rankings, but that, could, uh, that would not surprise me at all. Last question. Sorry, I joined a bit late. Don't worry about that at all. What is the relationship between, oh, this is a very good question. The relationship, I should have made this clear at the start. The question is, what is the relationship between Northampton and Stafford University? The first thing to say, Stafford is not a university. Northampton is the university. 
And what Stafford does, Stafford, it's called Stafford Global, and you have a look at their website, and they have various university partners. What Stafford, Stafford Global does is market and recruit the programs, uh, usually collect fees for the partner universities in the region, in the Middle East and Africa primarily, but as I say, it can go more broadly. Simply because it's easier for Stafford Global to do that because they're based in the region than it is for the university to do it because they're, of course, on campus in the UK. So it's very important to realize that when you get onto the program, you're going to be talking to the nice chaps at Stafford Global, um, you know, Helen, Ruksha, uh, Karen, these types of guys who are going to, who, are, uh, who know all about the program and will do their best to get you onto the program through the application pro process, all of those types of things. But once you've been accepted onto the program, you are completely a student of the University of Northampton. All of the academics come from the University of Northampton. All the rules and regulations are from Northampton. Your degree is awarded from the University of Northampton. And it's very important, of course. So everything academically is from the University of Northampton, but they partner with Stafford Global to help with marketing and recruitment in the region. So I hope that makes it clear for you. I think I've managed to answer all my questions, which was pretty good. All right. Thanks very much, everyone. If you do have any other questions, let me make sure you've got my email address, my contact details, rather. There's my contact details. So if anything else does come to you, just feel more than welcome to drop me an email or get in touch with me, and I'll be more than happy to, uh, to advise. But the final word I would say, I know it seems a long way away, the, North, the November intake, the next intake that we, got, we have going, but bear in mind that applications close six weeks before the start date because they need to have time to process applications and do the interviews, et cetera. So really the time will go very quickly. So now's a good time to think about that proposal and start getting some ideas down, which by the way, when you submit your proposals um, to, you, to your uh, consultant at Stafford, they will forward them to me and I do have a look at every proposal just to give a bit of advice before you formally submit it to the university. So now's a good time to be thinking about, about proposals anyway. Okay, thanks very much for listening, everyone. As I say, any questions after this, feel free to get in contact with me anyway. And I hope to see you here in the UAE in November. Bye for now.